Yo, what's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. I'm Chase and welcome back to a brand new video. I've absolutely loved making this video. I just want that to be known. I love Wamai. He's one of my favorite operators this season and I was so excited to bring you guys this. I've worked on this for a little bit of time and I have put the time into Wamai this season and played him tons. So I'm really, really excited to make this, you know, how-to guide for you guys. So today we're going to be discussing how to play Wamai. It's an operator review once again, guys. I know you really, really love this series. We've done so many in the past, so if you're new to the series, go check those out. Also, be sure to comment down below who you guys would like to see next week. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive down into Wamai. No pun intended, because he's literally a merman. But uh, yeah, let's dive into Wamai's background. So Wamai is from Kenya. He's 28 years old and he was born into a fishing family. He hunted sharks all the time and loved to discover lost treasure. This is a man who would literally dive down into the bottom of the ocean all the way to the ocean floor and find treasure at a young age. It was discovered later on in his life that he had an abnormality that allowed him to remain underwater for extended periods of time, and the people of his town and his native area believed that he was not from this earth, so basically they thought he was an alien. That's kind of weird. Wamai would go on to join the Kenyan Navy, then he would join Nighthaven for more downtime. He thought that the Navy was a little bit too hard on him, you know, didn't give him enough free time, and, you know, Callie kind of swayed him over to join Nighthaven because she offered him, you know, that off time that he really wanted. Also, I think it should be noted that Harry, you know, the little guy behind the scenes that's all about the R6 lore, writes that, you know, Wamai seems very mentally free and that he is able to think of the abstract and that he is extremely static in his dialect, meaning he kind of talks like a robot. All right, next we're going to be looking right at Wamai's loadout. And wow, it is is it something that gets overlooked a lot. So Wamai is a two-speed, two-armor operator, and he is classified on the Rainbow Six website as an anchor. I would agree with that. He is a very, very good anchor. For his primaries, he has the AUG A2. This is also the exact AUG that IQ has access to. It has incredibly slow ADS, and it's large on the screen. However, if you're willing to deal with that, it does reward you by packing a punch damage-wise. It's deep DPS is incredibly similar to the 416C that you see on Jaeger. On the other hand, he also has access to the MP5K. It's a fast all-purpose SMG. It feels incredibly smooth. It has no recoil and it is a headshot machine. I truly go back and forth between the two. I can't really recommend one because I love both of them. I played Valkyrie for a very long time, so I got used to the MPX and the MP5K. Kind of feels like the MPX to me, but also the AUG is kind of better damage-wise, so really just pick what you want. I think both are incredibly 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 viable picks as his primary as for his secondaries he has access to the Carados magnum revolver it's arguably the best secondary pistol in the game and then also the p12 which is you know the gi gn or sorry the gsg9 um pistol it's in basically an average all-purpose secondary it's not bad it's not good there it's really just in between i'd definitely go with the Carados. as for his secondary gadgets he has access to the barbed wire which is incredibly good for intel arguably the best secondary gadget in the game put them at entry points or as trigger points to watch your flank you know if you can't really keep an eye on every single door then just put it at one doorway and then you know if someone's there as for the other secondary gadget he has the deployable shield this is by far the better choice in my opinion it helps when I hold down positions as the shield is indestructible with your gadget covering it I know that's weird to say I literally just said the barbed wire is by far one of the best gadgets in the game but the deployable shield really just works better with Wamai because you can hold behind that shield you know throw your gadgets in front of it and then they can't really destroy it and they have to waste the utility as for Wamai's gadget he has access to the magnet system it's a thrown magnet that sticks to all surfaces it attracts attackers projectiles to its position resetting the fuse and then detonating the projectile not only can Wamai deny the use of these gadgets he can turn them against the enemy so yeah, if you want to throw a little bit of strategic placements behind Wamai, you definitely can. I think they're just better for locking down a position. So now we're going to be taking a look at some strengths of Wamai. He's basically a second Jaeger. I think that's obviously the best thing about him. In that case, you can run him with Jaeger for even better utility dump. 
Trust me, these two together are their own meta for a reason right now in Pro League. Utility dump is absolutely insane right now. There's just not enough utility wasters on the attacking team that are viable right now. <coughs> Fuse. Um, and then, you know, you have these two operators on defense that just absorb all the utility that the attackers have. Also, Wamai is incredibly meta. As I just said, him and Jaeger kind of have their own metas that they're creating right now. It's really big in the pro scene, and it's starting to come to the rank scene. With the AUG MP5K, deployable shield, and a utility absorbing gadget, he fits right in with the current meta. He's also a very underrated anchor. Use the shield to lock down entry points to the objective or mass traffic areas, such as the Villa 90 hallway. As I was talking about earlier, the shield and the gadget work so well together, and then that also can help stall out the round even if you do die. Now we're going to be taking a look at some of the weaknesses that Wamai has, and he can only be useful if he stays alive. It's much like something like Legion has, where when you play him, you must play for your life to have a greater impact on the round, as his gadgets will actually charge up over time. You don't get all those gadgets right off the bat. However, this is also kind of a good thing, because since he charges up over time, you know, he can technically have infinite gadgets. He's capped at five out at one time, but if one of those gets destroyed or used, he can get another in its place. So yeah, when you're playing Wamai, you really have to play for your life. You can't really play too aggressive with him. You really got to play passively and just wait and pick your shots. So we're going to be looking at him head-to-head -head against Jaeger. So for the first thing is the gun. I mean, obviously the AUG A2 is good. However, it's a slightly slower version of the 416. But trust me, guys, it is still very viable if you want that AR that packs a punch. Well, Mai can technically burn as many gadgets as possible due to his gadget being, you know, a recharging gadget. However, Jaeger can only burn six. So where Jaeger has a cap, Wamai well, technically does not. Like I said, you know, it's capped at five, but if one of those gets destroyed, he can recharge another. Also, both have barbed wire, heavily discussed as the best secondary gadget in the game. Barbed wire is almost an essential pick on either of these operators, but you can also pick the depot shield, as already mentioned like 20 million times, for Wamai. So some strategies that rely on Wamai. Uh, the jaeger Wamai combo that we've talked about all video is beginning to grow to be its own meta, as the two together make it a headache for the attacking team to absolutely do anything. With these two picked, the attackers must waste absolutely tons of utility to advance towards the objective, and as I've already said, you know, they don't really have that viable operator that can waste a ton of utility. <coughs> Fuse. And then, of course, you also have the Wamai shield combo that we've already talked about. If Wamai sits behind a shield, and throws his magnets ahead of the shield, he can lock down any area he prefers, technically making him the ultimate anchor. Alright guys, coming in on the final rating, I'm going to be giving Wamai an 8 out of 10. If Jaeger gets a 9 out of 10, I believe it is rightfully deserved to Wamai that he gets an 8 out of 10. Wamai has been absolutely overlooked by many until this season, and people are beginning to wake up to see how powerful of an operator he truly is, including myself. It's funny to think that just around 4 months ago, I suggested he needed a buff in one of my most successful videos. Wamai is really, really hard to pick up and do well with, but once you start to learn and do the strategies with him, especially that once again, the Jaeger Wamai combo, you will start to fall in love and realize how essential he is of an operator currently. So yeah, that was the Wamai Operator Profile video. I uh, have started this series back up again. I love doing these, and I especially love doing these about the operators I love, <coughs> Wamai. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this was my how-to Wamai video. A lot of people were wanting this as I praise Wamai so much. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to follow my Twitch and join the Discord with the link down below in the description. And I will see you guys later. Peace.